So we were driving down the street and we actually noticed our guys out on the job site. We're in Geneva, Illinois. Let's go check this out. Give them a hard time. So Team Aquascape is Brian's channel, our local market channel, and it's more of the construction side. This is what we do. We're the only manufacturer in the world, literally the only manufacturer of pond equipment in the world that builds water features full time. So what is this project that we're walking up to, Brian? So this is a project we sold a few weeks ago and uh, Chris is out here putting it together and I know um, he's just putting the finishing touches. So it'll be kind of fun to see how he's uh, put it all together based off the design I gave him. Hey! Hello, what's up? We want to make sure you're doing a good job. Hello. Hi there. Wow, this is gorgeous. Hi there. I'm the Big pond bus. guy, Greg. Hi, I'm Amy. Hi, Amy. Well, nice thanks for getting you. an Aquascape water feature. You're out here with our boy, Chris, <laughs> who's been working hard today. What do you, how's our team been? Oh, awesome. I mean, I we could watch right from, you know, <laughs> our family room here. It's amazing, like, how they're placing every rock. I mean, I, I knew sure. kind of what was going to happen, but I didn't really realize what an art it is. It an is. Art. It I is mean, an these art. guys are super It isn't Chris talented. a nice kid. Yeah, nice guy. Was Super this talented. you? Was this your husband? Was it a mutual thing to get a water feature? It was definitely mutual. Uh -huh. I've been to some on some of the pond walks. Perfect. Um, we love it when customers go and see because then yeah, they really know yeah. what they're looking for. What was the investment um, for this? About 28, 25, mm -hmm. 20 something. And you're into conservation. I see the uh I the try to be, yeah. I'm a master gardener also. There you so, go. We love it. This is a know, cool this yeah. is a cool customer. I've been raising monarchs actually. We I got my it. milkweed, we, we, you we know. Need more yeah, milk. I'm we need more it. milkweed. I'm digging it. How long did it take them? It was pretty pretty fast, wasn't it? It was quick. They started it on Tuesday and then we got that huge massive Mo yep. monsoon at like two o'clock so today's and, Thursday so and they've yeah done yeah so two days I would say two and days beautiful work a little work. bit yeah oh so, really fascinating so, hey Chris how many guys did you have out here we had five guys yesterday and then the three of us just for today this was a, uh, a new construction pond that Brian sold earlier this year budgeted for about a hundred man hours so we're coming in just a little bit under we started day one got the pond dug we actually had to kind of dig it in sections so we dug this whole back area first got that rocked in because our access was right behind you the access uh, for the pond was in front of me so we had to build our way out of this thing dug this Rock this, dug a little bit more, rocked the bridge, these big sections over here, and then the last thing that we did was we dug this section right here, kind of the last six feet of pond and the waterfalls area, and then rocked it that way. So it's moss rock, weathered limestone, and a little bit of granite mixed in. We're just finishing up putting the aquatic plants in right now. Finishing touches. We love how, the, how it turned out. The bridge is incredible. Uh, I like how big it is and some of the big rock. It really adds a nice scale to the water feature. I love the shape of the pond. And then all the little plant pockets that we put along the edge for marginals looks really killer. I think what's so cool is when I lay these out for you, all they do is they come out with a can of marking paint and yep. say here, whatever you want to do, like bridge should kind of go in this spot, waterfall should kind of go in this spot, and then you have to improv and, and come up with what works. And it looks like you had some obstacles, you had to move a drain. Yeah, we had a downspout that was going literally kind of where the bridge went, so uh -huh. changed the shape, right? Remember, we had talked about putting the beach on the back side yep. of the pond, instead we moved it up close. I think the waterfalls is uh, key too, like you didn't go very high, and I love it. Like there's a lot going on with that waterfalls yep. without it having to be three foot high in a very, very flat backyard. That's actually what Amy was saying right when you guys were walking up uh -huh. she was glad that we didn't go any higher than we did yeah so I always get a little nervous right when we set the biofalls and then we're piling dirt up and and we don't necessarily make it high enough I'm yep. always afraid that the customer is gonna be a little disappointed but she loves it and like you said it's to scale with the rest of the what's your favorite part of this the shape of the pond yeah I love that she decided to go with the moss rock and you know, we always go hand select all these pieces mm -hmm. and I have an idea of what you should do with them yeah but I never know what you're gonna do with them right <laughs> but I think uh, after all the years, we're definitely in sync with the same vision and, and it looks incredible. I love the shape of the pond, I love the bridge, I love these big destination boulders that yeah. invite people to just walk up onto them. I like how you slope that one. That'll be like Shamu the Killer Whale fish feeding rock. You know, they can put a little food there, the fish will come right up out of the water. <laughs> I like the, the one rock out of water too. Yeah, that's cool. It's weird how the water just wants to hug the left side of it instead of the path of least well, resistance. Well, look at how great that is with the circulation though. Like that water just shoots. I mean, I'm sure you intended it to do that, yeah, no, right? That but it shoots water, but... right through there. Yep. And it almost makes it look like this thing's suspended up above because the water's disappearing out underneath it and then yep. shoots back out underneath this way. They're gonna love, love, love this. And with her being a master gardener, it's gonna be fun to come back in a couple years and just see how yeah. she's decorated it herself. Yep. Good job. Thanks, Blake. Cool. Hey, it's 
Brian with Team Aquascape. I'm out here in Geneva, Illinois, and it is 100% fall time. I'm walking up onto a project that I haven't seen in well over a year. I think we've started building this uh, August of last season. I was in the neighborhood and 100% wanted to stop by and see it. I remember um, thinking it was gonna be a super cool project when we designed it and while we were building it, and uh, wanted to check it out and share it with you. Oh yeah. Pretty cool. And you know what? It's not gonna look 100% like projects that we always show you on this channel because it's fall time. But if this is the worst a pond can look, why wouldn't everybody have one? So you can see, you know, most of the perennials are losing their leaves. We've got <laughs> leaves from the silver maples and all the other ash trees and everything else kind of sitting around over in here. You can see where they probably had some big planter boxes, probably here, one over behind that rock. Some of the other plants are still holding their leaves. The nine bark here still looks really good. They've got some big tall grasses in the back. But I do love the design of this. The whole thing was designed to be somewhat interactive. So they've got this great gate here and then we did these stepping stones leading to a big stone bridge. And when we do bridges often, if you guys haven't noticed this, we love doing big slabs of stone rather than the big arched wooden bridge. Just a big, big piece of rock here. And what a cool rock. Love the way this looks. I was talking with her not too long ago and she said uh, her favorite part of this rock is that in the summer it heats up just a little bit and the dog just loves laying on it. And I can see whether you're a dog or a kid kind of laying in there and then looking down into the water. You can see some of the leaves that come in here. One of the neat things you can do, if you've got thousands and thousands Thousands of leaves that are coming in your pond in the fall due to all of these different trees in the area an option is to always net the pond now it doesn't look that pretty to have a net over the whole thing but you weigh the option how often do I want to clean out my skimmer box over here and if you didn't net it you probably have to clean that out two to three times a day this time of year or I put a net over it for about three weeks until all the leaves have fallen I love these big rocks Another great part about this pond is look at the biofalls. Like the biofalls just completely disappears. I love this big giant rock on the back side. So instead of just little rock, little rock, little rock, little rock all the way around, breaking up the monotony of all of that with one big rock in there. And that's supported with the rock shelf that the biofalls comes with. But that's probably one of the best hidden biofalls I've ever seen. I just love the way that looks. Another great thing about this pond, we're only dealing with an elevation on that waterfall that's about 14 inches from grade. So from here to there is no more than 14 inches and they still get a lot of action. So they got a great little drop there and then that water just kind of rushes across the surface in this area, really helping with the circulation of this pond, trying to push all the debris back over into here. We've got some depth over here. Goldfish are actually still pretty active down there. She said she started with six, and like all ponds, they slowly multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. She estimates about 50 in there now. This pond's also set up with what we call the permanent winter de-icer. I don't know if you guys can see that water moving there, but that's fed off of a different pipe and pump. So inside of our skimmer box, we have two pumps. One that sits on that side, one that sits on that side. This pump here feeds the waterfall. This pump over here feeds these jets. And in the winter in the Chicagoland area, it's really important to keep a hole open in the ice. These jets, as long as that water is pushing out from that area, will always keep a big hole open here, right over the top of the deepest area down there. That allows great oxygen and gas exchange throughout the pond, making sure those fish will survive year after year. What an awesome pond. And if it looks this great now, imagine how incredible this pond must look in the summer you can also see as I kind of come around the house here how again the whole pond was designed to be viewed from inside the house kitchen window here family room over there the Sun comes up in the morning definitely bounces off the water here the rays bounce off the water here and will put shimmery marks all over the ceiling of the inside of the house there which is a great bonus when you can bring water up as close to the foundation of the house as we have in this spot here so let's talk a little bit about the design of this one. I remember coming out here meeting with the customer and the only thing that was here was this patio. And it was pretty easy for me to think about where to put this pond. I mean, they've got a pretty wide backyard, not necessarily deep, but pretty wide backyard. The view over here, 
could have worked. The challenge is, is putting the pond over on this side would have been really disconnected from the patio and then only visible from one room. They've got this great little three season room right over here. And I loved that you'd be able to see it from inside the three season room, but not as much from the patio space here and the grill was gonna ultimately block some stuff. All of that stuff can always be moved, but I'm always, always looking to try to get this thing visible from as many windows inside the house as from areas outside the house. And so for me, it was a no brainer to put the pond over in here. You can see how she's moved a couple of Anirondack chairs where they sit out here and just look. And then most importantly, it's visible from inside the family room here. And then that's the kitchen just past that space over there. So to see that pond all winter long, all spring, all summer, all fall, even on chilly days like this, makes a whole lot of sense to put the pond here. It connects the pond to one of the entrances to the backyard. And so when we do something like this and I can put a pond that's long enough here, you automatically get a bridge. And I love designing bridges into water features. There's something very psychological about them. Anytime you put a bridge in, there's not an individual person that can ever resist crossing the bridge. The key is the bridge just has to lead to something. And in this case, it leads out to the side of the yard where she's got a vegetable garden and some other stuff back over in here. So really cool pond. The guys killed it. I love all the moss rock. We handpicked a bunch of this moss rock from Semco Stone. Went out, handpicked a bridge. Got a great little beachy area over here. Love doing these little gentle beachy areas because it invites all the different uh, songbirds and stuff. Butterflies, dragonflies, a place to come get a little drink of water and breaks up the monotony of boulder, 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 boulder. Just let your eye rest for a second. Really cool pond and can't wait to see this thing mature year after year after year. Hope you guys enjoyed it.